So welcome everyone, welcome again to this uh, uh, another edition of the APEC VMAC. If you are not aware what the VMAC is, it is uh, the Miro, wait, it's a virtual Miro user group event. I got it right, Rosh? <laughs> so you got it right. I got it right. So uh, we are here together with, uh, you know, uh, a, a a great pan, uh, you know, a great group of people, uh, panelists that I've invited, uh, Josh and I have invited uh, to be part of this learning experience. Uh, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves in a bit, but we uh, we have Boyan who's out there in Austria, uh, Milin here in Singapore, as well as Timothy in Australia. Uh, Raymond will join us uh, in a moment. Uh, he's he's kind of tied up, uh, but he will join us. But otherwise, this is the mirror for educators: tales, tips, and tricks from. Academia is that? A, is that a, you know? In my mind, it's like it's macadamia. Like, so how do you say it properly, Josh? You're good at this. You're you're, you're American. Academia. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. I just want to make up a pronunciation just for fun. Just ah, madamia. They're just we're just gonna go with whatever. It's it's we're gonna go with a, a guttural sound to it. Why not? <laughs> Okay, so what's going to happen for the next 90 minutes? Uh, it is going to be uh, an immersive experience. Uh, it's going to be interactive uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, but also, we are going to tap into the knowledge experience from our panelists, as well as from you guys, your own, you know, your own experience using Miro. Perhaps if you are an educator, we want to hear your experience. Uh, you know, using something like Miro in a classroom and you know the, the challenges that you face, the successes that you face, it would be really good to hear from your perspective, from your, uh, you know, from experience. So uh, there, this, this 90 minutes has been kind of like split into two parts here. Uh, so the first topic that we are going to kick off with is around transitioning into new ways of knowledge delivery and student guidance. Uh, this is all about, you know, with with the pandemic, uh, you know, that came along, you know, rolled along in March 2020. Uh, one of my things that I, I wanted to understand is, you know, how how has the world of academia uh, adapted to this new learning environment uh, in terms of, you know, uh, helping learning facilitators, lecturers uh, adapt and use, you know, the tools that are necessary in a virtual learning environment. And uh, I'm gonna hear about that from Melin. And as well as uh, Timothy, Timothy, who is based in Australia, he's a career coach. Uh, I'll get him to introduce himself. And how do you engage students, you know, beyond the classroom uh, in, in a virtual environment? Uh, later on, we are going to, you know, get uh, a little bit more deeper in terms of, you know, how has the, the, the classroom changed in terms of, you know, having been, having been asked to move to a virtual setting. So what has been happening in our virtual classroom? So we're going to hear from Boyan, who is in Austria, uh, in terms of his, his experience as a student using Miro, as well as from Raymond Thomas, who is a lecturer as well as a co-founder co at a company called Enable. Uh, we want to hear his experience in terms of you know, using Miro uh, for, for his interaction, for his, for, for his classes. Uh, at, at all points, uh, you know, if you have a question, feel free to put it in the Zoom chat. Uh, there's, a, there's a place on my mirror board, on our mirror board, where you can put in your questions as well. So uh, without further ado, uh, just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, so as I mentioned, this is going to be recorded, so I hope that's okay. Uh, we have small groups, so it's not pretty loud. So, you know, if, 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 if let's do this, right? If somebody mic is turned on and it's loud, we'll just ask that person to turn it off. I hope that's okay. So again, this is all about learning. So ask as much question or as many questions as you can. Uh, I think it would be so much better for our collective learning. So perhaps some of you may not be familiar with Miro. So this, this is a quick introduction on how to use Miro. Uh, when you get into the Miro environment, so I'm gonna share the link in a Zoom chat in a moment. When you get into the Miro environment, by default, it is not in edit mode. So what you wanna do is you can click on the blue arrow that's on the toolbar on the left, or you can use the V button, V button, so that you can toggle it between uh, navigation mode and edit mode. So now that I'm edit mode, I'm gonna do hello all. The tool that we're gonna use uh, the most for this 90 minutes is the sticky note. So it's 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 this you know this icon over here. It may be hidden somewhere in your uh, toolbar menu, 
So perhaps it's in the menu. So what you can do is you can click on it and you can bring it into the space like this. Click on it. And I've just put in a sticky note, Halo Effect VMAC. So I do this. Uh, you can resize and you can also use the same uh, Microsoft magic things like uh, duplicate, control D, uh, control C for copy and control V for uh, to paste. And you can also undo your last action, undo, 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 which is control Z or command Z if you are in the Mac environment, okay? So what we're gonna do is I am going to share this uh, mirror bot link in the Zoom chat. And here you go. So uh, we're gonna wait for you while you arrive in the mirror bot. Just making sure this is in edit mode. Okay, welcome again. Welcome to the mirror environment. Uh, this is where we are, you know, we are going to use the space to kind of like put your questions into the space. Uh, since you are all here in the mirror board, let's do a bit of like a really short and quick icebreaker. So pick up a sticky note and tell us you know, your name, your country, and is there one learning objective that you would like to achieve at the end of this uh, 90 minutes? Okay, I think that would be really helpful. Okay. So, so thank you. Thank you for uh, contributing to the space. I hope you are a little bit more comfortable with the Miro tool that we are going to use. I can still see some are still updating the bot. Uh, nonetheless, I'm going to keep it there. So what we're going to do is uh, let's start the ball rolling. So I have the, uh, the three panelists here in the, the room. Uh, if you would like to uh, uh, share a bit more about yourself, uh, give us a good introduction. So let's start perhaps with Maylene. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is Maylene from Singapore Institute of Management. I see a few of my uh, colleagues here. So great that you all can join. Uh, and, and I would look forward to you helping me to share your experience using Miro as well. So what I do in um, SIM, is uh, really to support um, faculty members um, on uh, creative ways of engaging students um, uh, because of the switch to the virtual environment, a lot of uh, challenges and adjustment as well. So my role before the pandemic is really how to infuse more technology, um, using education technology to engage students, to step up the engagement, and also to facilitate uh, evidence-informed uh, strategies in, in the classroom environment. So now that we have a lot of, uh, this pandemic has actually um, pivoted us into a, a more hybrid and maybe purely online environment. So I'm actually also learning myself as well. And in fact, Miro was introduced to me by one of our lecturers and I was really glad that I could um, experiment with it in my own uh, workshops as well. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, let's have Boyan. Boyan, you want to do a bit of introduction? So hello, everyone. Greetings. My name is uh, Boyan Radnev. I'm currently in Austria. I'm an undergraduate student in uh, Corinthia University of Applied Sciences uh, in Filach. Uh, and I'm currently in the period of uh, my internship, so in my final year. Uh, and uh, how it came up for me to uh, start implementing Miro is uh, in our latest project, uh, which you'll hear about more later. Uh, we had uh, a large group of uh, students, basically, uh, of participants split into different teams. So uh, we were wondering what would be uh, the best way to implement um, kind of a platform that would allow for asynchronous and synchronous work at the same time, which would also allow the students to uh, furthermore, uh, basically display their uh, creativeness uh, when completing and participating in tasks. All right, thank you. Thank you, Boyan. Uh, and Timothy. Hello from Sydney, Australia. My name is Tim. I'm the career coach and learning experience designer at the University of New South Wales. In terms of my day-to-day, -day, uh, I work directly with students in supporting them with anything career-related. So over the last one year, Working from home, I've been talking to about 1,200 students across faculties and in the, and um, disciplines, starting with first-year students to PhD students and also even mature students 
who uh, returned back to uni for upskilling. And then uh, besides uh, doing career coaching, I also uh, conduct uh, group coaching as well as um, classroom um, settings. So before COVID, it was mainly face-to-face. -face. And then with uh, what happened last year, um, all of my workshop has been um, done online. And so that's where I've been uh, playing around with different you know, tools and Miro has been one of my favorites. And so uh, I also introduced Miro into my team and we use it um, as part of our uh, four week uh, design sprint uh, session where we redefine who we are as career coaches and what we uh, can add or how we can add values to the faculty as well as to the student engagement. And so I'm, I, I got to use Miro to design and deliver that with my team. And um, so I don't claim to be an expert. I'm, I'm definitely a learner and a practitioner. And uh, that's why I'm so, so um, pumped, you know, to be here because I, I want to also learn also from you guys. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can, um, you know, cross, I call it cross pollinate and learn from each other's examples. Thank you. Thank you, team. Uh, so before I start the round of difficult questions, uh, I'm going to bring everyone to my screen in Miro. So this is where you can put in your own questions if you have something to ask the, our panelists. Uh, so let me, let me ask Milin, uh, Timothy, and, and Boyan, what is kind of like the state of, uh, the state of virtual classrooms or you know, the adoption of you know, uh, technology tools one year on from the onset of, you know, the pandemic uh, as we know it. So perhaps, Meilin, you want to you share with us? Um, yeah, actually, uh, last week, I just conducted a focus group with several of our adjunct lecturers, asking them about the experience of using the learning and um, platform as well um, that uh, we have newly introduced and also um, how they feel about this change. I think what uh, one thing that came up um, is about the interaction because um, when we were uh, teaching an in-person face-to-face uh, the lecturer can actually in one glance see everybody in a classroom and they could see facial expression um, to give you a signal of how well they are doing and mm. it is very um, natural for the lecturer to walk around in a classroom to check on the work of the students. I think that that element actually was missing. Um, but what supplemented in uh, the virtual environment was a lot of chats. So students became uh, more interactive in the classroom because they now can, to a certain extent, hide behind the screen. But they begin to be more um, courageous, you know, to speak up through the chat interaction. So a very a lively chat, and I, um, a lot of my lecturers, are, uh, um, yeah, are pleasantly surprised that they got uh, a lot more interaction in that virtual um, environment. So that is mm. one key point in how um, we have transitioned. I think still a long way to go. Um, chat is just one dimension of interaction. And of course, mm. with other tools, uh, we can do a lot more. Yeah, thank you. So Boyan, let me, let me ask you, I mean, were, were you, uh, you know, were you in the physical classroom before the, uh, the pandemic happened? And you know, what, what, what have your experience been in terms of uh, change? Yes, basically. So for the first year and a half of my uh, education in university, I was uh, present in most of the classes. Uh, but then after the pandemic came, we had to kind of shift to uh, a virtual classroom, which uh, I would say from the perspective of a student, for some other students, it was extremely um, difficult because like the short attention span or uh, the use of uh, like having to read so many emails or to receive so many me uh, emails with meeting details. Uh, mm. For example, some teachers prefer to just provide to us the information over emails and we basically didn't have classes so we just had to complete a specific task after reading a document. Then there's also the plethora of platforms that exist such as Zoom, uh, MS Teams, um, and uh, it was very difficult to kind of at first get used to all the different technological mm -hmm. preferences of uh, each of the teachers and all of the functionality of the different apps. So, so like what one platform chat is available to do, what another platform chat is available to do. So 
sorry, now I would say it's uh, way better. I would say that most of us are actually uh, used to this and we're starting to slowly but surely start to see the benefits of the implementation. And uh, yeah. teachers are also managing to find uh, different ways to make uh, virtual classrooms more interactive. So right. uh, people have more attendance, but uh, yes, it is. It changed quite a bit, I would say that than them from yeah. the beginning. So in in the in the whole that you know, in the whole chaos that happened you know in the early days of the pandemic again I have to refer to it, uh, what sort of support were you receiving from you know your uh, the teaching staff or was there any or, or no 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 it? yes there there was there was quite a lot of support from the teaching staff I would say which uh, we all are very grateful for because um, a lot of the teachers were uh, quite understanding of uh, for example deadline extensions and uh, mm -hmm. that sometimes, for example, the uh, the transfer of information through emails might be delayed or, uh, for example, there might be a mistake. So uh, they were very open uh, to communication and a large majority of them uh, were answering all of our questions throughout the day, which some days were uh, quite a lot. Uh, and uh, in, at the end of the day, uh, it was all about balance, I would say. So uh, they managed to uh, kind of, uh, with our suggestions and with their suggestions, we managed to kind of basically find the perfect balance. So uh, at least 90% of uh, all students basically at the end of the year were happy with how things were going. Right, that's cool. So like you guys come together, you know, teaching and student collaborating to kind of like make it better for everyone. And let's hear from Timothy, like, you know, I mean, you work closely with students and, you know, you're kind of like a guide. So what, what has your experience been? Um, I think it has been a mix. Definitely some worked really, really well. And some, I think we're still navigating. Um, and I also have conversations with different faculties in terms of how their a virtual experience has been. And I, I would say it's highly diverse depending on the nature of the faculty. I think for those that, for example, I, I work with the faculty of science and their student need to do like laboratory work, right? And I think translating that into a virtual environment is it's really, really difficult. And, and it's really hard to, to be able to help students have that kind of tangible experience uh, as, as compared to you know, doing it in the lab. And so I think depending on the nature of, of the, um, the lessons as well as the, the course, um, the, the design have to be very different. But I think one initiative that has been very positive from our uni is that there's a new division called Teaching Remotely. Uh, it's a service that offer to all the faculty and professional staff. And so I see lot, a lot more collaborations happening right now, you know, not just the faculty being the, the content expert, but they work together with the education, the education designer and the technology um, or IT expertise to, to then um, bring together different disciplines and, and design a more holistic experience for students. Uh, on my end, so previously, I before COVID, right, I did most of my um, consultation face to face, but then with um, working remotely, I've been delivering it on uh, Teams and also sometimes on Zoom. And mm -hmm. it, it's actually a lot better for students because I can share with them the link, I can share the screen, and sometimes mm -hmm. I can also follow up with them after the consultation, whereby previously, if it's a face-to-face, -face, sometimes it's really hard to, to follow up with, with the students. And so I, I do see, yeah, I, I do see some positive side of, of, of um, you know, going vir virtual. Um, mm -hmm. I think when it comes to the classroom, right, I think the, the biggest struggle has always been about understanding students' behavior on a virtual environment, especially mm -hmm. if students uh, choose not to turn on uh, the camera yeah. or, or the audio, right? And so we have been trying to creatively find ways to get more students' input throughout the workshops, right, in order to also engage yeah. them and also pick up some cues from them in, yeah. in terms of how they have been you know, engaging whether they understand the the content and whether they they are part of our our, our so-called um our activities. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Uh, let me reach out to the uh to the audience or to our audience uh, to our friends in the audience. Uh, anybody has you know would like to say something around you know your own experience in terms of your institutions around adjusting to this new virtual you know remote learning environment. Uh, anybody would like to share your, your own experience and how has it been so far and how has it evolved now in April 2021? 
I'd love to share. Hey, yes, Svetlana. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, yes, team. It's so amazing to be at this event right now. I'm based on the border of Italy, Slovenia, and Austria. And uh, within our institutions, we organize different cross-border events. And the lockdown, because the borders were closed, we were actually very lucky because we were able to organize the same cross-border event, but in the virtual environment. Mm. And also, we used Miro for that. So I oh, think okay. we found an opportunity in the challenge. Thank you for this great amazing way of uh, reconsidering and reinventing the future of education right i mean i don't work for miro but i'm really i'm sure they really get glad to hear it mm -hmm. in the video recording uh but yeah i think i think i mean for me as well like it's been quite a revelation around you know uh mm -hmm. it, it, to me that space that virtual space in miro is kind of like where we all could get together and and you know participate and collaborate uh, and you know in a way that could you know replicate that classroom uh, physical environment i think that's such a big uh, it's such a big deal for me as well yeah thank you svetlana anybody with any other thoughts or your your own experience is that, uh, is that I yeah i can't see myself on the screen here I, is that is there any reason why i've turned my video on but i can't see patrick i can see you okay <laughs> we can see you come up now it's gone yeah, yeah. yeah. I think one of the challenges you have, uh, and uh, Miro is a marvelous tool. I've been using visual tools for three years now in classes, but you still have this gap between students wanting content and teachers, if I can call us teachers, wanting facilitation. Mm -hmm. uh, when you put people before exams, they want to take a whole dose of content. Facilitation tools are fantastic for facilitating. I'm not sure they're great at, at putting you know, bucket loads of content towards students to take in to absorb in that way. So that I think is a dilemma educators still have to grasp. I, I use um, knowing soft skills training in the corporate world. So that's not about heavy content dumping. So I right. think to be clear, some of you mentioned technologies, the right tool for the right problem, I think is one of the things that we have to understand too. Right, right. I, I, I hear that as well uh, from, uh, lecturers who have, uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to kind of like expose to Miro, like, how do I use Miro in, you know, while lecturing? And uh, I, I simply don't have the answer as well. So, uh, you know, perhaps I could, you know, we could hear from experiences from the others later on. Uh, so thank you for your contribution. Uh, Maylene, do uh, you prepared something for us? Uh, you know, you want to share your experience uh, using Miro as, uh, you know, Head of Academic Development at SIM, maybe? Yeah. Sure, yeah. I think maybe before I do that, I just want to pick up the point that Timothy and Patrick shared about um, engaging students and also um, the tension between covering content and facilitation. So um, uh, while, while students will have a 15 or 20 weeks of lesson, um, I think uh, if we are able to think of ways to engage a student outside that live session, uh, for example, using Miro, um, then what, what, what was missing um, due to the pandemic, pandemic, for example, bumping into students in the hallway and just impromptu questioning, all, all those were missing, right? But if, let's say we have a tool such as Miro, then because it's there, any students can you know, see who is online at the same time. So that, that could be a very nice occasion for them to have a conversation while working on the same piece of work. So um, yeah, I just want to highlight that point about um, engaging even outside that live session. Okay. Right. So, so, so quick question. So would it be possible if lecturers, uh, you know, just record all their lectures and then, you know, that, that lecture time is actually used to uh, you know, to engage, would it be possible? I mean, I, I'm pretty unfamiliar with this, you know, this territory. Yeah, actually, what you're referring okay. to is actually called flip learning. Uh, uh, it, it, it's possible. So, but there are um, uh, areas of concern because we are assuming that students, when they go through the recording, they will be able to understand all those mm -hmm. big chunks of content on their own and have that motivation and discipline to regulate the learning outside the class time. So that is the gap that probably we will have to think of ways to, to, to support further. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Chime in on that. We, I, I run a creativity program, which is Flip. I also run it online as well. And one of the things I've noticed, and it's only my perception, is that, that we do video our, our programs. I actually think for some students, it leads to less engagement because they can always go back to the flip. They don't join in. 
they do whatever else they do. The, the learning mm. becomes almost like a little TV screen in the bottom. Then they might mm. be doing other things. It helps them multitask. So the use of video when you're doing this, I, I think is it, it's counterintuitive. You can't you can't learn much from watching someone, a group of people doing right. this. It's this is about active learning. So right. using the video here, I think we have to be careful. Again, the right technology, <laughs> for the right solution for what you're yeah. trying to achieve. And, and, and everyone's throwing bucket loads of technology at it. This is, Miro's great. Yeah, in, in, I, I yeah. fully agree on that. It has to be context specific, right? Yes, use... that's right, yeah. So uh, um, when I was introduced to Miro by one of the lecturers in the institution, so I was actually, um, that was even before the pandemic, she was using it to engage students outside the, the lesson time. So I was very intrigued and I wanted to experiment with it. But I also understand that Miro, um, to learn Miro is, um, there's a learning curve there. And um, like what Patrick and some of the lecturers have mentioned, uh, there are so many tools you have to juggle and a lot of content and assessment in, in mind, right? So in order to just get people to be familiar with it, um, um, I decided to hold, to introduce Miro in a fun way instead of um, during a training environment. So I took advantage of our last year um, appreciation faculty appreciation dinner to introduce this mural tool to people. So I'm not sure, uh, I believe all of you can see my screen. So yes, we couldn't have a nice dinner in a fancy hotel. That's what we do every year, but we couldn't do that. Uh, so we had a virtual table. So about 200 people attended um, the, the okay. virtual session. And we had these tables and people can just pick their seats and sit with um, the friends that, that they, they haven't met <laughs> for, uh, it was held in December last year for almost about um, 10 months. So they could put, pick, pick a seat and put their photos and put a post-it on um, uh, something interesting about themselves. So, um, which is a nice thing. I think it's a first introduction to the community about what Miro can do. And even though our session was just about two hours, um, that entire appreciation session with um, some activities, but this board was um, available um, a, a week before and even after. So people ah. can continue to engage with each other. And what was interesting was I, I'm hesitant to zoom in because I noticed it's recorded. Mm. I'm not sure how many people are okay to have yeah. their photos yeah. shown. So I don't want to zoom in. But what was interesting was um, people started to share what they do outside um, their professional life. Like I found out that uh, one of uh, our lecturers actually enjoy uh, mountain climbing. And then they, they enjoy uh, so many different types of food and they just won uh, an award. <laughs> yeah. So I think those kind of conversations are, are actually good and um, it has the potential to bring people closer uh, at mm. another level. Mm -hmm. So I, I like that approach that, you know, it, it wasn't a training session, but you used this, you know, this moment to kind of like introduce Miro. Uh, but what was the impact afterwards? Like, you know, were they, were, were they all clamoring like, you know, hey, we want to use Miro for the classroom? What was the feedback, you know, after this? Um, <laughs> I won't say that people start asking about how uh, it was used for the classroom, but it, it got um, some curiosity. And I have a few questions from lecturers who were interested and they wanted to find out uh, how they can use it. Therefore, I invited Isman to run uh, two sessions or workshops for our lecturers who wanted to explore more. Yeah, so I thought that is a very nice transition, showing people how it can be done socially. And even though we can't meet in a dinner setting, uh, we still can see how people can decorate their seats uh, creatively. Mm -hmm. um, I also used, um, um, I worked with a colleague to develop this um, in the team. And he gave me the idea of, you know, uh, Miro, you have the lock um, uh, um, feature. You can actually, um, all these are locked. Um, mm -hmm. But when the user uh, put in the post-it, so they will just put it on top of that layer. But there mm -hmm. are actually mystery seats in this table where the squares are not locked. And if you manage to find that, you can get a secret surprise. <laughs> I never so, thought. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so this was something fun. It's like during a dinner and dance, you know, you have some mystery envelope underneath your chair. So mm -hmm. we could actually pull this off uh, virtually. Yeah. yeah. So that I was like a social slow, setting. <laughs> yeah. Slow introduction to technology. Yeah. I always. That's right. Yeah. I think people have to feel comfortable and fun with it first. Yeah. 
Um, another example would be to bring them to the next level. I conducted um, a blended learning um, workshop um, because, because of the pandemic, the school um, actually will have a long-term plan of moving some of our courses to be in a blended, um, uh, a blended mode. Uh, to introduce people about this concept, blended learning um, is actually, uh, there are actually two things that we're trying to close the gap. One would be in terms of uh, shifts in mindset, whether, uh, you know, how can we uh, use technology to enhance learning better or what, what, what would be the best way to blend, you know, which has mm -hmm. nothing to do with skills, but about um, the belief about the affordances of technology. So I think in terms of uh, mindset change, uh, and supporting people to, to feel competent about that. I, I just want to help people to, um, can you see my screen now with the yes. um, matrix of delivery modes? Ah, yes, that's great. So because there are different ways of blending um, and we don't have a unified framework for it because we, we have so, so many uh, diverse programs. So uh, I invited um, the lecturers to decide on their own how would they want to blend and uh, from this matrix here, they could actually put in their sticky note. And if they teach across multiple programs, they could actually put their um, sticky notes across multiple places as well. And they and I provided an open space if they want to have their own blend. Yeah, so that was a quick um, introduction of what blend could be mm -hmm. made possible. And it opens up opportunity for lecturers to um, share their ideas. Uh, when they say they want to blend in-person lesson with synchronous and asynchronous, what does mm -hmm. it mean? Yeah, so um, that that's actually a simple uh, activity, but I thought uh, using Miro was a nice way and, and colorful way uh, to get people, um, yeah, to, to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I think this is a great idea. Like, you know, uh, again, it is a slow introduction to technology, right? You do not overload the, uh, the lecturers. And again, you give them room to be creative. I mean, to, to think about, you know, how do you want to do it themselves in terms of, rolling things out virtually for the classroom. I think that's, that's amazing. Thank you so much, Melin. Uh, I want to call on Timothy. Timothy? Yes. Yeah, so uh, Timothy, uh, what are your thoughts on, on what uh, Melin has, has presented uh, from your perspective? I think it's absolutely amazing. And I, I agree. And I love the way, um, Melin, you give the experience to, to people. right? And, and I think experience speaks for itself. And I have the same um, um, kind of experience with my team because um, I'm one of the younger ones in my team. So uh, one of my concern has been, you know, whether um, they would be adaptable or, or will be quick to jump into Miro. And, and I, I was thinking a lot about how can I introduce Miro into the team? And I think the best way to do it is through an activity. And mm -hmm. surprisingly, and I, I did the same with students, um, and surprisingly, they jump on board, they have fun with it. And that's where more questions were asked and more initiative um, was being uh, so called implemented as a result. Mm. Yeah, so I, I would always, I'm a believer of starting small, start with right. some quick, quick prototype, which I think, I mean, I'll, I'll be showing you one prototype that I did with my students as well. As, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I can hear a theme here that, you know, do not quickly jump into it. Like, you know, do not do it in the, you know, in the classroom setting, but, you know, do it before, if it's possible, like do it before, you know, do it in a social setting, uh, do it in, you know, in a place where people feel, feel a bit safe, like they're not being judged, you know, it's less risk of, of mm. anything. Yeah, so, so thank you for that, guys. And, and Timothy, you have an activity for us to, to participate in, so. Oh yeah, so I mean, this is just a time, and that, that I invite you to think about your own experience. I think uh, we, I believe that we bring together so much uh, rich and deep experience to share with one another. And this is um, just a board that I create to invite you to reflect on your own experience, what has been going on well, what you used to struggle with, and also what might be some questions or some ideas that you want to explore further within the virtual uh, space. Let me quickly put on the board and uh, we can uh, jump in and do it together. Let me do the shared screen first, if that's okay. And I will uh, share your link here. Thank you very much. Yep. And so the intention of this activity, which is just about 10 to 15 minutes, is um, to create this space and time for us to reflect on 
our own experience right, with the virtual learning space, whether you are an educator, a trainer, or you are a learner or a participant yourself, right? I would love to hear a bit of your experience. And again, this is a safe space to come together as like-minded professionals. And so I hope that we would jump in and share with one another. Um, so we start first with the individual reflection, right? So uh, we will do a rose thorn bud activity. Um, I'll have three questions for you. We will spend one minute per question and you would use one sticky, one idea per sticky note. And then after that, uh, we will break into smaller breakout groups uh, in groups of three, right? Just to share how has things been for you, you know, since maybe COVID or since, you know, everything has been going online right now, right? So um, I assume Isman already shared the link with you. And so I just want to bring you to the board here. Let me quickly bring everyone into the board. Yep, and so the question for you is, what have been going on in your virtual classroom or meeting space? Or if you are a student, what, what have your experience attending the virtual classroom or virtual meeting have been? Right, so we start first with the question, what has been going on well? Right, so similar to the previous activity, you can just copy and paste the uh, pink sticky notes right, to write your experience. And so... I would suggest that you write more than two words, but then less than 10 words, right, to describe your experience. And I will put on a timer. So we spend one minute. And I love that we have some music for Miro. <laughs> and now let's jump straight into the next part, which is what have been the things that you struggle with um, being online? All right. Um, let's move to the last section, which is what might be the potential area or questions or things that you want to explore more in this space. Right, so you can start with maybe how might we or perhaps write down um, a specific area that, that you might want to try, you might want to explore, you might want to further looking into. All right, time is up. And now um, Isman, uh, I will need your help. So now we're gonna go into a bit of a uh, sharing together. So we're gonna break into groups of three where you would be sharing your experience, right? Using this board. I think you can use this board as some cues or some um, reminders, right? To share how things have been for you, what's going on well, what you struggle with and what you might want to explore further in your context, in your role, right? Isman, um, whenever you're ready. Uh, Joshua. Please, oh. Tech my Tech No problem. How, how many minutes in the breakout room, Isman? Uh, let's do about six minutes. So two, yeah. two minutes. So maybe two minutes per person. Perfect. Sounds good. Sending people to the rooms now. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I hope that uh, was, uh, was enough of a good time for, for you to you know, share with each other your thoughts. Uh, so, so thank you, team, for running that. I think, team, you have one more thing to show us if you want to uh, help us uh, show that quickly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just showing you quickly one of the prototypes that I ran or I implemented with the students I work with. So this is part of one group coaching session that I did with a student in one of the career courses as part of the university. And so, again, the, the, the intention is to engage with students and really be able to provide a bit more personalized experience for students. So the context of this session is, is a midterm check-in uh, and it's done in group of 10, uh, up to 10 students. And one of the, the challenge that I always uh, find um, very real in, in, in any group coaching is when students choose not to engage, when they, they, they stay quiet or students from different faculties or when they, they come together without knowing the other person who, who they are, I think then that's where students tend to withdraw a lot more. So um, a big part of this design I, I put together um, is first to start with creating that psychological safety, making students feel a bit more comfortable um, sharing and talking before they go deeper into you know, what's going on with their career development goal, right? So I usually um, start, so this is a one hour session that, that um, I spend with students. Um, so I have, I think this time, six or seven students joining the session. And I, I usually start with the intention, the session overview, and also some engagement rules. And so something as simple as um, 
maintaining confidentiality. No one has all the answer. And so we're here to learn together. Uh, we're not uh, here to perform, but to help and support one another. And um, I invite them to experiment with technology. And uh, this part, uh, when it's over, it's over means uh, there's a time bound for each activity and we need to move on whenever mm -hmm. the time is up so that we keep it within one hour. And the first activity I did with them was to invite them to claim their board and also share four things. Number one is their morning routine. And so they drag and drop the icon into this uh, film's uh, role here. Uh, what are the, what's the best advice that they have received uh, recently? Where are the places that, that they want to travel or they have traveled and want to go back again? And what are they, uh, what are they looking for towards uh, this year? Right. So besides just um, sharing about, you know, what they're studying or some mm -hmm. of the standard one, I think this uh, makes things up a little bit. And um, I give them one minute um, and they take turn to share their experience. And I think this really brings together um, the sense of um, safety and, and a bit of like personal uh, connection before uh, we go into the second activity, which I think you just now have tried, which is, uh, allowing mm -hmm. students to think about what has been going on well with them, what they struggle mm -hmm. with, and also potential area that they want to explore with regards to their career development. So this has been set uh, right at the start of the term, and this is a midterm check-in. And so students come together to um, to share their, their experience. And then after that, I put them into a breakout group. Uh, I pair them up, and so each of them share their experience. And when they get back to the main room, instead of sharing about their own um, challenge, they share about their friend's challenge. And so again, that adds another element of um, safety and, and, and togetherness as, as a group. And after that, before we end the session, I also give them time to ask me a question. So uh, uh, it's also a time for them to uh, think about you know, some specific career question that they they, um, they want to, to further clarify or explore. And lastly, towards the end, I asked them to do a bit of reflection and action plan. And surprisingly, um, many students um, say that the, the experience was very positive because when they can talk to their friends, they realize that, oh, we struggle with the same thing, right? So I'm not alone anymore. And, and, and that kind of gives them the confidence as well and the, the assurance that they're on the right track. Yeah, so this is just a very simple um, prototype that I put together and uh, it, it went really well because um, I think students have some moments that they can work on them, like they can spend their own time working on their board mm -hmm. and then there are times where they can talk to other people. So it's a combination of individual reflection and also group sharing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Svetlana says she'll borrow it. So <laughs> she'll borrow it. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank and, you so much. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, just, I guess, a very quick one as well. So this is another board I did for the industry partner um, session. So I, I invite nine representatives from the industries to do like an um, industry panel with the students. Uh, we have 120 students turn up for this event. And my, my concern has always been, how can I let the introverts, you know, involved in, in, into the, the conversation? And that's where the board is designed so that both the introvert and the extrovert have a chance to ask questions. And so um, I think, again, uh, this has um, gone really well. And then a lot of students gave us very positive feedback. Yeah, just want to share quickly, you know, some of this um, sample. Amazing work, Tim. Thank you so much. And, and, and this is kind of like the early in your journey as well, right? So I'm pretty sure you're going to do amazing work. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for that first half, the first topic. So before we move along, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Raymond Thomas, if you uh, one of our other panelists. So if you, you're there looking like a ninja, if you want to introduce yourself for, for a bit. Uh, thank you, Isman. Hi, guys. My name is Raymond. I'm wearing a face mask right now because I am seated in a public area. Uh, so I don't have a choice, but I, I pretty much have to... Um, uh, comply to the basic requirements and that's why i probably look like a ninja turtle huh? sitting down here but never nevertheless I, i've been just listening to the amazing uh, sharing between isman uh, and and timothy and malin and it's just fascinating how miro uh, miro is being used 
so effectively in the many different uh -huh. academic programs that we are actually running. Um, mm. I, I kind of like picked up the interest in terms of Miro. Uh, and I want to say probably about a year ago when I, when I started seeing other people using it, and namely it was Isman. All right, uh -huh. Isman was the one who was using it. And that got me really curious. It's like, what is this guy trying to do? Right. And then and then I got a hang of it and somebody else said, hey, you got to go look at Isman's boards. And I started looking at Isman's boards. I started reaching out to Isman. I said, Isman, share your boards with me. And I started just learning. He, he's kind of like my biggest uh, inspiration as far as uh, mirror board is concerned. And, and that's how I picked it up, guys. The initial part of it was really tough because I, I used to create lesson plans. Um, and I, I did this work both for academic and also corporate. And I, I tried to create lesson plans throughout the whole program. So sometimes something that's running for about five weeks, I tried to, to put everything into the mirror board so that they could see a sequence, they could see a story happening uh, throughout that learning experience itself. Uh, and and if if there is an opportunity, I would love to share one of my bots too, uh, just to just to give you an idea. Go for it, this one. So definitely, we we will definitely want to look at your bot. Uh, but I want to shift back our perspective or our discussion to the from from the you know educator and administrators to the students. So I I want to reach out to Boyan. So Boyan, uh, so I found out about you know you and the work that your team has been doing through Splitana through. Uh, I, 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 no, sorry, I apologize if I don't mention the name correctly, but I, I saw the video, I'm like, wow, like you guys are do, using this in the classroom and it looks amazing. So Boyan, I'm going to give the floor to you. If you want to show us, you know, what you and your team has been doing uh, in, uh, you know, in the learning space around using Miro in a classroom, we would love to see it, Boyan. So please take it away. Um, so before firstly uh, showcasing the Miro board, um, we wanted to implement because currently, as I mentioned previously, I'm in uh, uh, my phase where I'm doing my internship for the organization uh, CSR Austria. So as the project manager, one of the project managers and the project coordinators for the rebordering project, I was basically tasked with uh, getting firstly uh, to know the Miro platform and then uh, providing kind of a rough demo version of a mural board, which uh, could basically serve the purposes of the project. So before also showcasing, I would want to quickly give out just some details regarding the project. So the Rebordering Europe Views and Voices of Citizens and Non-Citizens is a collaborative project between the organization that I'm currently doing my internship in, CSR Austria, and the TAME for Citizen Networks. Um, it was The project was uh, completed by 57 participants. Uh, and in, they're all from uh, five different universities and we're all in different border locations. Uh, and in the beginning of the project, uh, I had to split them up in different teams. So then as a project management team, we started wondering uh, what kind of application is going to allow us to basically allow asynchronous and synchronous work, uh, not only for the students, but for us as project managers to observe and to basically kind of control the work. And uh, also what platform will be uh, able to serve the purpose basically as a digital whiteboard that contains uh, all the details and the implementations from the beginning stages of the project to, I would say, the end stages also of the project. So um, just a second now, I will share my screen. Um, is everything visible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, yes. So first I want to focus your attention on the section which is related to the project details. So this is kind of the first uh, few frames that I created and I edited over time. Uh, and there with the intention because I wanted to allow the 12 students uh, whilst working on the uh, mural board to be able to see their uh, project details. So as you can see, uh, just so I can zoom in a bit, here we have the welcome video, which contains all the project information, which was done by uh, my two colleagues, which are also in the meeting right now, uh, Ms. Knapic and Ms. Buko. Uh, then we have the title screen of the project. Then we have kind of the shortened group requirements. So regarding the teams, the mixed, uh, that each team is supposed to have mixed team members because that's how students would gain more. Uh, to use the virtual platforms for communication, we. This was something we really were trying to promote basically. And of course, uh, at, it's a student project. They had to be mindful about the deadlines. 
we had why the project is important. Uh, also, there uh, the milestone chart, which is uh, connected to all of the dates. Uh, and of course, uh, the 8th of April is when our final event was basically scheduled. And finally, we had uh, the management team, just so uh, all of the students that come from the partnering universities could uh, get to at least uh, visualize the faces of the people who are running the project. So uh, as I mentioned previously, we had uh, 12 teams, uh, 12 intercultural teams, which were uh, created. Uh, and each team had a workstation. So uh, as I've written here, use the arrows to locate uh, team workstations. So just by uh, going into uh, a random one, uh, you can see basically all of the differences uh, from the students. So in the beginning, uh, all teams started off with a uh, four frame team workstation, which I created and uh, everyone had equal opportunity. Uh, and this was created due to the fact that uh, we wanted to basically see uh, how much of the students are actually going to want to show their creative side and would want to uh, play around with the mural board and try to basically make their workstation uh, in a way uh, different than the other workstations. So as you can see here, some teams have really, uh, despite the short period of time which was provided to them, have really managed to basically uh, display the whole journey from the beginning, which was 15th of March till like the 8th. So we have, um, just so I can zoom in, we have team member information. We have, uh, it was one of their goals to post pictures of their first meeting. Uh, I also advised a lot of them to basically not be afraid uh, in a lot of emails and even in some of the mural slides, which I created to not be afraid to uh be creative and if uh, any difficulties happen they could contact me i was going to help them throughout uh, their project this is their video ideas uh, they also managed to uh, uh provide thank you to their guests and provide like at least pick the pictures and the names of the guests that they created the digital stories with so i would say that a lot of students uh personally uh managed to uh, utilize Miro in a very good way and to showcase, as I mentioned previously, the whole journey throughout all the stages of the product, of uh, the project, sorry. So uh, then I want to focus your attention on our uh, later implementation, which is the discussion blackboard. Uh, and this implementation was uh, done at a time where I was really getting, uh, I would say, bombarded by uh, student emails because uh, of Miro or other project tasks. So I decided that it would be a great, uh, I could answer also their questions while I'm uh, checking up on their uh, progress, basically. Uh, they still, most students still preferred uh, the email route, but uh, for projects, I would say that uh, the discussion blackboard, it doesn't take too much time and it's a great implementation because then students could ask uh, a lot of questions uh, throughout while they're working on their project simultaneously. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to focus your attention on the bottom section below all the team stations, which is the breakout room discussion board one and the breakout room discussion board two. So uh, to give a bit of a backstory on this, on the 8th of April was when we hosted our final forum event. Uh, and we decided as a team that we have to display two of the digital stories which were created by our student teams. And uh, for each of the videos, there's these questions that I've provided in the sticky notes. And uh, in a similar way to how uh, now for Timothy section, we were split into breakout rooms. The teams were mixed again, so we created 12 different breakout rooms. And after they observed the video, they had to uh, provide an answer to the question which is related to the video. So I would say that uh, a lot of students actually, here is when they managed to showcase that it could use the mural board. So we have breakout room one, we have all their answers, they provided their names. Uh, it was related to the question. I would also want to showcase this video in regards to, yes, it's a bit low quality, but it's in regards to these breakout rooms. So this is how much activity we managed to have when uh, people were uh, completing the, or filling out the breakout rooms and the discussion boards, which uh, for us was amazing because we didn't know how uh, much of the students would actually want to participate, but seeing just this huge influx of names of people and colors just 
being on the Miro board at the same time and providing answers to the questions was wonderful. And I would like to conclude everything I presented just by saying that uh, when I was given the task to uh, basically implement and to create a project Miro board, I was a bit scared, but now I can say that uh, it was a tremendously fun experience and I think it was perfect for the project and not only for the project that I uh, showcased to you now, but for any uh, student project in general. Uh, and this is due to the fact that not only is Miro, uh, how can I say it, uh, compatible with uh, the Microsoft Office package, for example, so you could implement stuff from Word, from PowerPoint, from Excel, from PDF, it's compatible with YouTube. It has all of the templates, uh, all of the sticky notes, all of the emojis. So uh, it's really like vast the amount of things you can implement into a Miro board. And on the other hand, uh, it allowed me personally and uh, the whole project to store their information in uh, kind of one shared space and allow for that asynchronous and synchronous work of each of the team members. Uh, and they were also, as you saw in the team stations, uh, they were allowed to be as creative as they possibly could. And uh, my final statement would be that for me, the limitation basically of a mural board uh, is equal to the amount of creativity which the people behind said mural board are willing to display. Yeah. Once they break away from the fear of using it and it'll, oh wow, they discover that there are plenty of things that could they could use for the mirror board. So thank you so much yes. for sharing, Boyan. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have a lot of questions for you and for the other panelists. Uh, oh, just hold on for a minute. So I'm going to pass it back to uh, Raymond uh, to do you know his showcase, uh, and then we will have a QA and a before we end this session. Okay, so Raymond, if you want to uh, do a bit of sharing on, on, on your project with the students, or how, how if you approach uh, using Miro in a classroom, Uh, you're on mute. Right. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm back. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for your patience. So I'm going to I'm going to just share with you uh, one of these uh, classes that I ran. It is an undergraduate program here in Singapore, uh, and I ran it uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, and it was a topic called. And let me see. Let me see if I can pull that up. And here is my mirror board. And I'm not sure whether you can see what I'm sharing at this point of time. Can you can you guys see what I'm sharing yep. it right now? Yep. Okay. Yes, we can. We can see a board. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So so here's an example of uh, what I, what I did, and um, this is a personal development class. I I guess you can see the university that I was representing uh, when I was uh, delivering this program. So uh, wh why did I use Miro? Let's let's take a step back and 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 sh I want to share with you why I used Miro. Um, first of all, this was the this is one of the very first virtual classes that I was running this year, and um, I wanted to find a different way in terms of how I could get maximum engagement from people. Uh, and one of the things I realized that whenever I was I was running it in a form of a lecture mode, and I was delivering a lecture, um, I would only get probably about ten percent of the participants of the students to actually get involved. All right. The other 90% were, were pretty much either quiet or kind of like a one word answer. And I, I was trying to think, hey, can I use Miro? And I, prior to this, I've already been using Miro with my corporate clients. So I said, OK, I want to I want to try to elaborate on this Belbin team roles. How could I do that? Uh, and um, I got them to do the Belbin um, uh, assessment. Uh, profiling and um, and then what they did was they came into the room and as you can see I kind of like broke this up into uh, two groups of people for each category of Belbin itself. One was the uh, the action oriented individuals and what I did was you're going to see a lot of coloring a lot of pictures and stuff like that but I just told them to go out there and you know create a t-shirt on the front of a t-shirt this is what they need to do to enhance teamwork. What strategies should work, should others consider when working with their style? And mm -hmm. at back of the T-shirt, what are your strengths and how can you style? How can your style enhance teamwork? All right, and that that's all I did. And then all, cool. what they did was they went in there and uh, they used the mirror board, uh, and I broke them up into two groups. And there you go, they just started clustering and pasting. And and the the beautiful thing, I got like almost eighty five percent engagement. These were the guys who were one word answer or totally quiet, right? Who, who just didn't want to participate. 
But eventually what I did was I managed to get them to participate through this journey of trying to understand the Belbin role itself. Now, at the end of the day, it's not just so much what I gained from it, but I think it's really important what the students gain from it. Mm. And, and that's, that's how I'm, I'm actually trying to evaluate as far as success is concerned. And obviously there, there is extra materials here that, that gives them reference points in terms of what is Belbin's team roles and what are some descriptors as far as the Belbin team's role. So they can actually make references here. They don't need to go to their slides and have a look at it. It's all here on the board. So it's a one stop for them to actually do these things. This is just one sample, Isman. Um, and, and guys, I want to share with you just one other thing. If you go right down here, this was another thing that I did, which I thought was also interesting. We were doing the values. We were trying to get these students to basically look at their values. So I plastered a whole bunch of words and then gave them instructions down here, right? So what are my values and follow this process? That's all I told them. And, and that's all they had to do. Action number one, action number two, and action number three. And they followed this. And I remember I did this as homework, right? Mm. The board was open for them. Uh, they came in on their own time and they started filling up, you know, following the same process and, and start, started putting words out there. And, and it wasn't just for me, guys. It's not for me, but it was for more of their benefit. It's more mm. of their learning itself. Uh, I, and I could, I could just go on if you, if you wanted to, but you, you can see the whole process go on. Like, like for instance, here, uh, we did a personal development uh, plan. Uh, and if I could just very quickly take you through this personal development plan. Ta-da, we did a SWOT analysis. We got them to do a SWOT analysis, right? They had, they had uh, images of these and, and they filled this up. And it's kind of like a process flow in terms of what they need to do. From there, do a skills audit. And then from your skills audit, you move on to the next part where you go into kind of like, what's my three personal goals? And from there, you go into uh, personal objectives. And right, right there, the next one was to basically just look at their picture of success. What was their picture of success? And all they could do is they could go out to Google. They could pick pictures, whatever pictures they want. And they brought it back into Miro and they pasted it. And, and, and the beautiful thing is we could get to see and learn how different people actually reacted. I, I just want to po point out this thing here, right at the bottom, someone started doing this, drawing on it, happy face, dollar cents, <laughs> right? So it, it was, a, what's that? Yeah, it was is a graffiti, it? absolutely. And, and it was an opportunity for them to express themselves. I, mm. I think that was, the, that was the biggest point that was the biggest benefit for me. And it, it wasn't just for me, but it was a learning experience for them to express themselves where they, were, they would not be able to do it if it had just been a virtual one-way lecture, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that's, that's just a little bit I wanted to share with you, uh, Isman and everyone. And I, I hope that that kind of like made sense, but you know, there's still a lot of other things that so, we did so in that workshop, yeah. Thank you so much for, for this, uh, Raymond. This is amazing. So let's start Q&A with you, okay? This, we're going to do a bit of Q&A before we, we end this session. Uh, I, I think uh, Svetlana was saying, uh, how do you measure engagement? You said 85% engagement. How do you measure that? Um, okay, so I measured uh, engagement. Number one is during lectures. I had about 10% of, of those uh, typing into the chat box, coming out and saying things and talking. Uh, but then when I put them into the Miro board, you could see the, everyone was moving. Everyone was moving around in terms of uh, doing different things. And, and here's the thing, you, you, could add, you can actually see the board being really busy, especially when I had like 50 odd students in there. So you have 50 people just running around. It's going to look so busy. And I'm going to tell you that you won't even, I, I didn't quite understand what they were doing. But again, remember, the point is, it doesn't matter whether I understand, yeah. but as long as they understand what they're doing. That yeah, was the big thing, for, biggest thing for me. For, for me, just looking at cursors moving in the space, it's like, wow, that's energy, right? People are moving yeah. something. It's not sitting, being laid back, listening to you, but they're leaning in and moving something. I, I think that's a simple thing like that. I, th I think it's super amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any other question for uh, Raymond or the other panelists? Feel free to, to shout out uh, uh, with your mic on or in the Zoom chat. Let, anybody? Yeah, 
Raymond, just to follow up, how large was your group of students? How many were there? Uh, there was 48 to be exact. All right, about 50 people, right? And those 15 who didn't, 15 percent who didn't participate, they didn't log in into the mirror. Is that correct? When you uh, measure the engagement, or they were in, they just posted something, but they were not, they were asynchronous. I just we are measuring engagement, so I'm interested in all the cases. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I I totally understand, and yeah, that that is correct. They just uh, I could see them on uh, in on the uh, on Canvas. I, I was using the Canvas platform, so I would see them there. And then I will, I, I mean, I'll see the numbers there, but I won't see the same numbers in the, the, my, the mirror board. That, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Thank you. So that was my measurement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Comment is just if I can. Yeah. Yes, yes, please, Patrick. It's kind of rhetorical in a way. When we were in our breakout group, Maylin asked a question What does success look like? Uh, and, and to kind of half answer her question, to me, success is not about the technology. I don't think it's about pushing Miro. It's about having clarity of a need and, and designing. And, and I do use the word with a capital D, designing stuff using whatever technology you have to meet that need and having some clarity in your own head, what they have to do in order to get this. It's not about pushing technology. And I think for, for far too long, whilst people have been remote learning, they're pushing technology it still comes back to the basics about having a need and knowing how people can demonstrate that need and then how they can use this particular tool in an effective and efficient way. I agree with that, yeah. Any, any thoughts from the panelists from uh, what has been said by Patrick? Yep, 100% agree. I think it always starts with um, the students, the context, and, and I think at the end of the day, it's also about what meaningful learning means to them and i think um if we start from there then the technology is just a tool and it's not it's not meant to I, and i i'm 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 not a believer of e-learning or or you know just thinking that it's the solution to to, to everything yeah which which i don't think it's it's is the right way of, of looking at technology and i agree with patrick yeah i'll just jump in i think um um, what Raymond mentioned earlier on about opportunity to let students express their thinking. Um, Miro is one of the tools and one of the avenues that students can express themselves um, either in terms of their understanding about the topic or just their personal view and interests. Yeah, could be outside whatever that you're teaching as well. So I think that is a very holistic representation and it gives you a safe space. I think more so than in the huge lecture theater. Mm. I, I just want to, yeah, I, no, I totally, I totally agree with me. And I, I think, I think when we, when we face students and, and one of the things that I, I'm constantly thinking about is uh, I think people just fear of being reprimanded, judged, blamed, shamed, you know, those kind of things. And all that kind of like just totally disappears when you get onto a virtual board because in a virtual board, you know, that there's, they, they don't have to be afraid of all these things because they're just going out there and they're expressing it. And I, as mm -hmm. long as we respect them and give them the opportunity to express, and I think that's, that's what really matters. I've got a question from Boyan and I'm gonna pick this up from, somebody put it in the Q&A uh, section earlier on. Uh, I'm gonna read this because you're familiar with the work with students. For folks who may not be familiar with Miro, what's the time frame to bring everyone on the same page before you start the lecture? In in that project that you ran with the students, you know, how long did it take for you know people to be used to the space or you know uh, to get going in Miro? I would say um, most uh, students were showing like quite a lot of potential while using the Miro board around maybe the second week after the implementation, like at the beginning, it was uh, very demoish in a way. So they were adding the pictures, they were adding everything. But before the final meeting, which I said was hosted on the 8th and the project began uh, on the 8th of April, and the project was hosted on, uh, began, it kicked off on the 15th of March. Uh, it was, uh, I would say a two week-ish time frame for uh, most students to actually, uh, feel I would say mostly comfortable to complete tasks and then for some to even be creative but of course everyone has different creativity levels everyone has different completion levels or what like their idea of complete is in that sense 
uh, mm -hmm. and for me as just the person who created the board and everything, it took me, I would say two or three full like days, but uh, there's a lot of the, the good thing about Miro is that uh, if you have any questions, firstly, there's a lot of videos that showcase mm -hmm. how certain things to be added on the YouTube platform. And secondly, there's also the forum also, which uh, if uh, anything is uh, was not understandable for me. So for example, I was having difficulties implementing videos. Uh, I just did a quick Google search and everything became clear to me. 100% how I do it as well. Like just Google it and, you know, and solve it. So thank you for that insight. I think that's kind of a good uh, benchmark two to three days. Yes, just remember. I, I just wanted to say one last thing, which I, I thought was really important, which stuck in my head was that those bots that we, that I created, I would go back there on any ordinary day, there'll be one or two guys running around on the board. So the, the fact is that people, that, that students were using the board uh, in terms of, as part of their homework, as part of their reference work, they would go in there, see what other people are doing, or even, even reinforce some of their own points that they already put in there which I thought was a really great idea for the students. Thank you. Sounds like a unique, uh, you know, a unique output as well, right? I mean, I never thought of that, you know, before mm. using Miro, but that's interesting, mm. yeah. yeah. Just, 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 wanna add, yeah just wanna add a quick point on um, bringing people to Miro. Um, I think reflecting on my experience running the four week design sprint with my team, um, I do it in an unfolding um, approach. So the first week, I just invite them to use the sticky note. The mm. second week, I invite them to use something a bit more complex, like uploading images and then using emojis and then you're making connections, drag and drop, moving things around, circling yep. things. And so I think we introduce slowly and I think that's where people feel a bit more comfortable using Miro. All right. So, so, um, yeah. Just, yeah. can I add something to what Timothy said? Sure. Uh, yeah, currently, so uh, for the project that I was working on, uh most students basically had their team station and uh, i i think them all of them completed their tasks on time so the majority were not they had no previous sessions regarding uh, the miro board so in that two week time period they managed to uh, basically complete uh, all the tasks that we gave them and to present all of the information and as i showcased in some of the uh, miro boards to show their creativity basically so I think by giving them a bit more time uh, for any students, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, and just allowing them to play around first before the explanation would benefit for the future because they would already have the equipped skill set basically to participate in uh, any current and future projects. Right. Thank you. If I can kind of just chime in. Uh, yes. My observation by Anne is kind of interesting. Uh, it's quite creative. And you're getting people to create a lot of stuff. Much of my Miro has been used in the corporate world. That's where I do. In a half day or one day, you've got very little time to onboard people. So as Timothy said, you just give them the minimum they need to do the job. The emphasis is you need, you need to know what you need them to do. And yeah. you have to kind of mini-max it. You don't have to front load a whole bunch of stuff. The, 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 the best learning tool I've ever had on the net is Google. An empty box, just put the quotes <laughs> in there. And you have to kind of take that mentality to, to yeah. Miro. You're not in OT teaching them technology. You're yeah. using it to achieve an objective. You have to have that clarity in your mind. It's not about tech. I absolutely agree 100%. No, but but Miro is fantastic. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm mindful that we are right on time. In fact, we're two minutes over. Uh, uh, perhaps one last question, one last question, and then we will close this. If there's anybody who have any question dying to ask this uh, in this forum. Uh, just a comment maybe on Timothy, what you did with the peer reflection on the peer reflection. This is like amazing postmodern approach to learning because I knew about peer reflection, but reflecting on the challenge of somebody else and then sharing the solution, this is wow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for that uh, reflection. Okay. So uh, this is it. So thank you so much.